Right here. How much does the space shuttle weigh? Uh, about 260,000 pounds or so. 260, 270,000 pounds. You know how many tons that is? About 13, is that right? Or 130 tons, I guess. Uh, well, I yeah. call it a, a lot. Yeah, a lot. A whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Navy terminology, that's a whole bunch. But uh, on the shuttle, there'll be uh, liquid propulsion, so there'll be fuel on board the shuttle and also a payload. And when we land, we're about 210,000 pounds or so. Fred, we're watching the crew in the white room as they board the vehicle. Now, those orange launch and entry they're wearing, uh, how comfortable are they and how much do they weigh? What's it like getting on board the vehicle, those big, cumbersome orange suits? I think they, how much do they weigh? 60, 60 pounds, 70 pounds? I think they weigh uh, 60 to 70 pounds, maybe more. Uh, you have, what you see there is just kind of the top layer. And uh, under that will be a cooling system, set of underwear that uh, you get cool flow, water flow through it. But I think that we train in them so often that uh, they probably are uh, some burden, but I don't think we uh, much concern ourselves with it. This is the pressure suit we wear for launch and entry. Now when you get the spacesuit on that we go outside to do spacewalks with, that's a whole different story. That sucker weighs about yeah. 300 pounds, I think. So three times, three or four times what the launch and entry uh, suit wear weighs. Okay, we got the last question right here. Uh, how long does it take to put fuel in the rocket? How long does it take to fuel? It takes about three hours. I think we started about five o'clock this morning and finished tanking a little after eight o'clock this morning. So it's about a three hour process to pump these thousands of gallons into the big tank we call the external tank. You are both members of the first class of Space Shuttle Astronauts, the class of 1978. You have both seen the Space Shuttle evolve into an incredible vehicle to the point that it's building this uh, space station. From your perspective, uh, what do you think have been the most important uh, pro uh, progressions of the Space Shuttle vehicle itself over the years? Well, John McBride as a Navy guy has gotten much older than the Air Force guys. <laughs> At least. <laughs> <laughs> John, what do you think? I, uh, you know, we've kind of watched the shuttle go from back when we first started flying to being the vehicle that would do everything, answer all things. And we were launching satellites, doing in, inside the cabin exterior experiments and modules and launching, doing all kinds of things. Primarily, you see what the shuttle is doing today is completing the construction of our International Space Station. So it only has one mission now for the remaining duration of its life. But back in the early days when Fred and I were flying these things, we were doing a myriad of things. I'd say hundreds and thousands thousands of different things, experiments and studying the Earth and studying the solar system, launching spacecraft and recovering spacecraft. And of course, we've done a lot of refurbishing the Hubble telescope and other satellites in space. So, But primarily, it's kind of evolved into a single purpose spacecraft now, and that's to complete the construction of our International Space Station. We, uh, we had a space laboratory on board the shuttle, and so we were doing the kind of work, some of the work that's being done on the station now. Uh, but in a much smaller scale. But as John said, uh, we were doing all kinds of things in the early days, and I think they had uh, a great future uh, plan. Yeah, and I think we're both kind of sad. You know, we've been around now since 1978. That makes us dinosaurs in the space shuttle program, and kind of sad to see the end of this thing winding down. But the shuttle's been around for almost 30 years, and it's really time for us to kind of move on to the next generation of spacecraft. And allow some of these younger space explorers here today to have the opportunity to fly back to the moon and on to Mars. Probably Fred and I won't get to do that Mars trip. We both would like to do it, I think, but uh, obviously it's going to be somebody between 6 and 16 years old today that will make that first step on Mars. So it could be right here in this audience with us today. Let's quickly grab two more questions right here. Um, if you get lost in space, what would you do? That depends on whether you're in the Navy or the Air Force. Uh, in the Air Force, we'd just go to the club and wait right. it out. Or they'd go play a round of golf, you know, we'd be trying to work our way back to the Earth. Now, if you get, first of all, it's very difficult to get lost in space. They know where we are. Everybody knows where we are. And we're going around the Earth in a fixed orbit. It doesn't change. They know where we are all the time. 
if you were to somehow get, you were outside doing a spacewalk and you got away from the spacecraft, so to speak, and maybe gotten lost that way, first of all, there's a tether, a little rope that you tie to the space shuttle so you can't float away too far. A lot of our folks used to wear jet packs where you could fly out and fly back to the space shuttle. If you get lost out there one or two or three hundred yards and you can't get back anyway, then Fred and I will fly out to you. We'll take the shuttle to you and then you grab onto us. We're not going to leave you up there. Okay, and the last question right here. How many kids been to space? No, we haven't uh, had any. I guess the youngest has probably been 30, 30 ish. Uh, Probably but Sally and America and Sergey. Yeah, they were either late, late 20s or yeah, right at 30. Right at 30 years old. It's going to take you a while. Yeah. I tell youngsters, it's going to take you 10 or 15 years after high school to get your education and go into college, get your education and get your experience as a pilot or an engineer or a scientist before you can be selected by, astro by NASA to be an astronaut. So it's about 10 or 15 years after high school.